friends. Friday stuck at home. Yep. And I hope you're doing well. We're certainly liking to see things get a little better out here. It's one of those idioms there, liking. Yep. We're liking. <laughs> if you're down south, you understand what I'm saying. Anyway, we've been talking about things that are indicators that you're getting old. Besides all this gray stuff I got going everywhere, um, you know you're getting old when you finally come to a realistic relationship with the clothes in your closet. Now, some of you out there probably understand what I mean. When you were younger, I had this pair of size 34 waist jeans that I kept for many years. I just want you to know many, many years, thinking that at some point in my life I would get back to that. Then it was 36, and now, folks, I am the All-American, 38. Yep, that's where I am. That's where the majority of people in America are, and I just want you to know I am just normal. A 38. That 34 just simply is not, it, it's a dream. Not a possibility, but a, a dream. In fact, 36 is a dream. Not a possibility. Now, in case I get really sick or something, that might happen. But not not going to happen. Just simply not going to happen. So you know what? I've decided I've gotten really realistic now that I've come of age. Really realistic with my clothes. I'm getting rid of everything that I don't think I'll ever get back to. In fact, getting rid of it. If it's tight, it's gone. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't have to look good. Sue loves me just like I am. It's the greatest gift in all the world. I don't have to look good. No. And I certainly wouldn't look good in tight-fitting anything with flab hanging out somewhere. It just simply wouldn't look good. So you know what? Really realistic with the clothes in my closet. Got rid of a lot of stuff. Yep. That's what happens when you get old. I want to talk to you about a verse today that oftentimes it's interesting the way we can interpret and translate things. Um, this verse is in Hebrews chapter 3, speaking of Christ as the builder of the house. And he goes on in verse 6, says, Christ was a faithful son, faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are, we ourselves are. It's, it's emphatic there. If we hold fast, uh, oftentimes this is taken in a very subjective aspect, and there is that sense. It, it's a subjective element to it. We have to hold fast. And he's speaking to believers that were wavering and considering, kind of separating from their Christianity, becoming a little more Judaistic, a little more acceptable uh, in the eyes of the culture, something we have to be careful of. We certainly don't allow the culture, we do not allow the culture to decide our faith. It just simply can't. And when I say our faith, I mean the faith. The things that we believe, the Word of God decides this for us. And the Holy Spirit convicts us as to those things that are right and true, not the world around us. We don't believe something just because the majority of people are doing it. Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 11 is very clear on that fact that just because people are getting away with something doesn't mean that God is is for it. Or in 2 Peter 3, 9 and on. Or people just believe that things are as they always will be. Uh, that doesn't mean that God agrees with it, and nor does it mean that he won't judge it. But you'll notice that he says that if we hold fast, and that this could be easily translated as faithfully retain. Just stick to what you know. And notice this, and this is where word order becomes important. Uh, in the Greek, a word order is not as it is in English, where you have a subject, a verb, an object, an indirect object, these things. In the Greek, they could be dispersed throughout, and you identify things based on their case, their gender, and their number. And here we have 
one of those situations where I think it becomes very important. Notice that they are to hold fast or retain until the end. This is a prepositional phrase that modifies the verb. Until the end. Then it is not just our. There is no our there. It's the confidence. What is the confidence that we have? The confidence that we have is that Christ has achieved the work for us. We're, we are his house. We are the temple of God. We're the ones that his spirit dwells in. And notice it's not just this. It's the boast. Now, it's not our boast as in braggery. It's the boast, as Paul would use it, in everything that has been achieved for us. So our confidence is what he's done. Our boast is what he's done. And notice this, it's the boast of the hope. The confidence and the boast produces a hope. We, we haven't seen the reality of many of the things that we have, that we now possess as believers, but it's in our hope account. It's kept for us in heaven. In Colossians 1, 6, it's, it's there. It's ours. We, we will receive this treasure in 1 Peter 1, 3 that's kept for us in heaven where it can't be defiled. Yeah, it is our confidence and it is our boast. And this is what we hope in. The things that we've come to know about Christ and all that he's achieved. And notice this, which is firm. Or we could say secure. The reason why this word is not attached with till the end, because it doesn't identify as an adjective with the word end. It actually identifies with the boast or the the confidence and the hope and the boast. The confidence and the boast of the hope is secure. All that Christ has done for us is secure. As you go through your day to day, reflect on this truth. All we do on our end is just cling to what he has already done for us. We haven't seen it, we hope. And in Romans 8, 26, hope that's seen is not hope at all. And our faith is comprised of those things that we hope for in Hebrews 11, 1. But we hope. And that hope is based upon a confidence that we have in what he's achieved. And also, it's our boast what he's achieved. These are true, two objective truths, things that have been done for us. And you know what? It's secure. <laughs> I like that. It's secure because he did it. Certainly not because Tom Powell is doing anything. He's just resting in what God gave him. I hope you have a good day. God bless you.